In this lecture, we are going to focus on inferential statistics. Let us begin by distinguishing once again inferential statistics from descriptive statistics. Descriptive statistics is simply the presentation of the summary of numerical data. In terms of frequency, percentages, mean scores, standard deviation, what we said, central tendencies. Whereas inferential statistics asks a basic question. It says, can we assume that what we know of the sample is true of the population? So actually in a research, that is our objective, that we have sampled from a general population and we want to generalize what we know of the sample for the population. So let us say, I wanted to study the use of e-resources among students in Kenya, in the universities in Kenya. And from among the universities, now that is a population, I sampled four universities. Now I have this data about four universities. Can this be generalized for the population, all the universities? Can the data that we know of the sample true for the population. That is what inferential statistics does. Now, in this connection of inferential statistics, we can talk about hypothesis. If you have a hypothesis in your research, particularly for quantitative research question, then you need to use inferential statistics to verify or to test your hypothesis. And what is a hypothesis? Hypothesis is, in common language we say, it is a trial idea, a trial theory. Or some people say it's a reasonable guess. Now, reasonable, it's an important word there. What gives us this reason? What we know already provides the reason for our guessing about, assumption about the unknown. So hypothesis is derived from literature review, from what is known as an assumption about what we do not know. But it is the data that is going to test the hypothesis. So on the basis of the data, we can establish whether the hypothesis is supported or not supported. And to do this, we need inferential statistics. And this is the beauty of inferential statistics. The third concept when we begin to talk about inferential statistics is what we call statistical significance. Now, to understand statistical significance, we need to understand what actually inferential statistics does when we are carrying out an inferential statistical test. Statistical, inferential statistics takes into account three important elements. Let us say we are comparing two groups on their mean scores, two classes in the same university on statistical exam uh, or exam in statistics. Now the first point that inferential statistics is going to do is to take the actual difference between the mean scores of these two classes. So higher the difference, more likely that there is going to be a significant finding. There is going to be a significant difference. There is going to be statistical significance. The second element that inferential statistical test is going to do is to take the standard deviation. Look at the standard deviation. So the difference between the two mean scores is this. Maybe one of the scores has a larger standard deviation as compared to another uh, score. So in which case, the team or the group with larger standard deviation, in this, case, in this data set, the mean score is not representative of the group. And therefore, that mean score's value goes down. It cannot be taken seriously 
Maybe there are two or three participants in that group who have boosted up the mean score and it is not representative of uh, the whole group. So inferential statistics takes into account the difference between the mean but it also goes right inside the numbers to see the standard deviation and see whether that mean score is representative of the whole group and that we know from standard deviation. And the third element that inferential statistics takes into account in all its calculation is the sample size. The larger the sample size, more likely that we can generalize this finding for the population. So lesser the sample size, it could have happened by chance, it could have happened by, uh, by fluke, uh, by luck. So what does inferential statistics do? It is simply eliminating the possibility of luck or fluke in the data by taking into consideration not simply the mean score but the standard deviation and the sample size and that is what uh, inferential statistics does to establish statistical significance. Now statistical significance is reported in terms of a letter called P probability. The higher the probability level, the higher the, the score, the more possibility that there was luck. So in social uh, sciences, we fix uh, the standard sort of uh, cutoff point at 0 0.05. That means we allow 5% of luck in the data. At least 95% we are sure in social sciences that what is occurring there in terms of the dynamics between the scores as verified by inferential statistics is not luck. And so when the p-value is reported, we can judge the significance levels in terms of the following criteria. If p-level is less than 0.05, then we say a significant difference was found. But if the p-value is less than 0 0.01, we say a highly significant difference was found. If the p-level is less than 0 0.001, then we say very highly significant difference was found. So what are we saying here? Yes, the cutoff point is 0 0.05 to have a p-value that is a significance level and as it goes less and less to the level of 0 0.001 then we are having a highly very highly significant results here and so inferential statistics uh, really tells us how seriously we can take into consideration our finding and how less likely that this finding is a product of luck or just chance. That means what we know of the sample could be true of the population. Now, there are, for the sake of undergraduate students, we can focus on three important statistical tests that are in the level of inferential statistics. And I quickly mention them at this point. And then in the following lectures, we are going to take these tests one by one. So basically, there are three types of inferential statistical tests that an undergraduate student should be thorough of, should be familiar with. Now, it depends on the type of variables. You remember we talked about scale variables and nominal variables. Scale variables are scores that every participant gets on this variable. Whereas nominal variable is a way of categorizing our participants into gender or religious affiliation or yes or no people, that type of thing. So if you are doing a correlation test, then correlation test using Pearson's R is an inferential statistical test. 
Usually, all these statistical tests have a name and a letter. Name most often of the person who sort of invented this test. And the letter that is often from Greek or just English letters that was used by this author. So Pearson's R is a way of calculating the association between two variables in terms of correlation. And you need to have these two variables measured in terms of a scale variable. That every participant has a set of scores on these two variables. And then we can do a Pearson's R. The second type of inferential statistical test that we will talk about is comparison of mean scores using a t-test. So correlation was r, a comparison of means is t. Actually sometimes it is called student's t-test. We will talk about that more. But what is happening there? You have two groups of people and finally you on the same variable and you have two mean scores on that variable but drawn from two groups. So we want to see which group has done better or which group, is there any statistical difference between these two groups? And we use t-test, so comparison of means. And that is second important type of inferential statistics. And the third important uh, inferential statistics that could be useful for undergraduate students is chi-square. Chi-square is like you have two nominal scores you have, say, gender, male and female, and you have a yes or no answer question. And you want to see which gender chose yes more than which gender. So you're comparing two groups of people on two scores that are nominal. You're going for a chi-square test. And it is uh, uh, measured in terms of a the Greek letter chi or in English chi and there are many other types of inferential statistical tests like ANOVA, uh, uh, like regression analysis which we will not handle in this course but as an undergraduate student if you can handle these three levels of inferential statistical tests then you can go very far with your analysis and your argument based on the data.